Breaking, yes, uh, it don't bust for this area as a uh, Biafra independence uh, protest has uh, gone international once more. Yes, my people, yeah, uh, normally it don't go international. Yes, everybody knows about it, but once again, it has broken the bar uh, on the international level. Yes, uh, we'll be going directly into the details of this news. Don't forget, we are your one and only exposed news news tv yes uh, these are the details also in response to escalating violence uh, in the biafra land yes in southeastern uh, he said the protests has uh, erupted across a uh, major european cities with thousands of members of the biafran diaspora demanding international intervention in the ongoing conflict yes uh, we have they have been noticed um the, there have been demonstrations in London, Berlin, Paris, and Brussels uh, with the uh, independent people calling for the independent Biafra and condemning the zoo government for its handling of the crisis. Yes, uh, we'll be talking about these specific places, make you go know, make you understand, say everything where they actually happen is, uh, is something that is meant to be and not a joke. Okay, uh, he says in London, uh, Trafalgar Square, as uh, one way or another, um, protesters and people that have way that are Biafrans have come across and come around waving Biafran flags. They've held banners and said, uh, free Biafra now and end the Nigerian occupation. Similar things were reported in other cities where members of the Biafran community and their allies chanted slogans and called for foreign governments and the United Nations to intervene, which uh, PM Eba has been on the sidelines, have been in the apex too, making sure and um, poking around, making sure that these people come to a full-time understanding that there is no going back on this particular movement. The process comes on the heels of the Biafra Liberation Armies and the BNL's movement uh, uh, moving and stopping across the violence that has been taking place in the Biafra land. Uh, as the uh, zoo forces are in disarray, the diaspora believes that the time has come for the international community to step in full time i believe they have stepped in some time ago and they have made a few comments but now they are expected to make heavy comments heavy comeback and they make effective uh, uh what do you call it effective impact in this particular time at this moment because this time is the right time okay he says here that we cannot sit idly while our brothers and sisters are being killed from one ngozi we dare are said that stays in london he said the world must recognize biafra's right to self-determination and self-referendum and force the zoo government to stop its uh, violence International human rights groups have also raised concerns about the growing humanitarian crisis in the region. With tens of thousands uh, displaced by the conflict and uh, the zoo government's military response. As you all know that these people seek to do compl- Complete a, a genocide in the in the Biafra land in the southeast region, and uh, it is not something that is even being hidden on any ground. But then it is not what we will be looking at whenever we have we decide to do the necessary things that we need to do. That is just the truth of the matter. We are going to succeed. We are going to make sure we do everything in our power to make everything work out. The United Nations has called for a ceasefire and a peaceful resolution, but thus far, diplomatic efforts have failed to gain traction. As the conflict in zoo intensifies, the Biafran Diafra's global presence is making waves on the international stage. 
putting additional pressure on both the Naizuzu government and the foreign powers to address the situation before it spirals further out of a control. So, okay, my people, now so we go to give them straight to now back to back. Take notes. That is what we are here for. On another note, it is always good to have it in mind that we are not slacking back on another level. The next thing you will be hearing would be things that concern the Biafra movement. Eh, coming from the PM, Simon Eba. Listen and enjoy. Thank you. Thank you so much. Prime Minister Mogwistwa Evans. Thank you. Thank you. That question about our PM to respond and the whole world is uh, watching. Thank you. All right, please, those of you that are in the uh, space as a speaker, you need to raise your hands. When we finish attending to the hands that are up, we will uh, change the room with those that are waiting to come in. Uh, Rage and Fury, please uh, grab the mic. All right, thank you very much, my honorable minister. I hope I'm coming up loud and clear. Go ahead, my. All right, thank you very much. Uh, I will ask a brief question. But first, let me greet my Prime Minister, His Excellency Prime Minister Simon Epa, for all the Biafran people. I am Anisoko and Rubu speaking Biafra, and I am proud of my Prime Minister. I am proud of and before I go forward, let me say, Do you see the my son of Hesem? After you have done what you do best. Do you see satisfaction on a face? As you they fight for us to be safe. You don't think it's much. But to us it means the world. We wake up every morning and wish you were there. You don't have to lie to gain our trust. You will always have your people trust. We always love you, Simon Epa. Your every contribution makes our lives a little bit safer every day. You are the hero. You are the hero. Thank you very much, my Prime Minister. That is a song for my mentor, Lucky Gute. I just changed some of the weddings and I feel like I can do it for you. My question is very simple, sir. Like, from the beginning, you made your submission and you told us about some of the uh, international treaties that we are going to ascend to. And you made us understand that Nigeria even ascended to some of these treaties. So my question is, when a country or a nation that is part of this, that ascended to these treaties, break them, you see that the international community doesn't have the power to punish that nation because here in Nigeria, most of these treaties have been broken by Nigeria. And my second question is, how do you know that Donald Trump is going to be the next president? Because what campaign? We were the one that said Donald Trump is going to be the next. And we followed you. To my amazement, two days ago, Donald Trump is today a president. What is happening, sir? Because sometimes when you make some exposition, I'll be, I'll be scared that ladies our prime minister no go put us for trouble one day. You understand? At the end of the day, what do you talk? We'll come to court of us. What is happening, sir? Thank you very much. I am Ray Jeffrey from Mr. Kospiki, Biafra. Thank you very much. As you know, I'm a very strong Christian. Now I believe in God. So that is what we call divine mandate. When you are in a divine mandate, everything you do works for you. Even if they are against you, they will turn and work for you. And that's why I said, God told me, pronounce it and I shall bring it to reality. If you watch, that is not to say when I was a Nigerian, you know, when I was in Nigeria, you know, Nigeria is never something that God favors. You can, you see all the nonsense pastors, they will be making nonsense predictions, saying they are doing prophecy. They will tell you one thing, and if you, if you mistakenly uh, falls into that, 
they will be they, they will be using it to share to their congregation you see i said it i said it our own consecutively i talked about our prime minister in finland he become the prime minister i supported him i talked about our president in finland he become the president i supported him i told you the next is trump I supported Trump. I was one of the first person that endorsed Trump as far back as 2023. And it is on Google. It is on Wikipedia. If you go to the list of those that international politicians that endorsed, uh, endorsed Donald Trump, go to international uh, politician. My name is there on the list as people that endorsed Donald Trump. It is in the media, you can search and Google it. It's in news, Nigeria News reported it. Some international media reported it, my endorsement on Donald Trump. I believe that because I am on a, a divine mandate, so God direct me how and what to do and when to do it. Not like when you are in Nigeria, you are fighting a wrong fight. If you are, if you are predicting on behalf of Nigeria, you are in the wrong side. Every, every of your prediction will fail. So when you are in the right part in the right part and in the right mandate everything will fall into place now just check it from the beginning till now there is nothing i have said that i have not had including the kissing of dust of our enemies they are falling one after the other you may also understand that the one that uh, i posted the picture a few days ago the criminal ejofo have confirmed is a native doctor to ejofo is the one doing all the juju for ejofo no number they call him more than he was the commander of esn they recruited him immediately the same as an American. He become an Ibubago person, become AVG commander in Anambra, killing our people. Today he is gone. Now, I tell you that many of them will go down before December 2nd. So, what I'm trying to say to answer your question is that I am on a divine mandate. It is not just about Trump, Trump is a president. Trump is not going to single-handedly make decision on Biafra. That is why we started by educating the congressmen. That is why we started by educating them. And now we are moving to the, United, to the United States Department of State to educate them on the importance of Biafra. So there is still a lot of work to do. But you know, the beginning of the work will even start more immediately after the December 2nd, because we need to have this legal document to be able to be ready ahead of what is to come so a lot of work needs to be done and we are doing that so donald trump is just uh president donald trump uh, you know is not uh he just he's not gonna come out and say okay they, i give you biafra no it requires procedures processes and many many things need to be done which we are doing very very well so that's why they will always tell you, follow who no road. Some people don't even know what it means. You do not follow who no road, they will lead you to your, I don't know what it's called, but maybe you go into inside the evil forest and you never come out again. We know road. And that's why we are leading their friends to freedom. So this foundation we have laid today, you can see where we are today. You can see for the past many decades of Biafra issue, nobody has ever in the public discussed with anybody in the Congress, except now that the Biafra government, under my leadership, we just started. And on the 2nd of December, which is just a few weeks from now, you are going to see the caliber of people that will be in the Biafra Convention in Finland. Thank you. Oh, wow. Uh, thank you very much, sir. Thank you very much, sir. And that, that, I think you have answered my second question, which I would have loved to ask, that being that you, are the, you were the first to endorse to not come, the Prime Minister of the African Republic of in Holland and the Department of Government in Homeland, being that you are the first to endorse Donald Trump, how does he affect, how does he contribute to our freedom? But I think you've answered that. And let me use the mic by saying, I'm on a process for my radio friend. I'm on a process for my radio friend. I'm on a process for my no Simon on a for my roof for my time on a party for my thank you very much. Thank you, thank you, Rich. 
Rage and Fury, thank you for all you do. Thank you for your commitment and your service. Blessings. All right, uh, to move, I welcome our fellow media uh, person in the Biafra government, our own Betty Ford. Mommy, grab the mic. You're welcome. Thank you so much, my wonderful Prime Minister. I thank you. I love the way you started this program. In fact, I am very, very happy. Sorry, my people. I thank all of you for gathering and coming around whenever we are on the air. Thank you all so much. I appreciate all of you. My PM, I will call you this name. I don't care what people think. You are the Jesus of our time. And I thank you so much. I'm very proud and happy to be working under you. You have really thrown the light and it is shining. There's a question. Well, I won't call it a question, but um, it's just to make reference to it. On the X, I saw Nigerian government appeals to Donald Trump to distance himself from Simon Ekpa freedom agitation whether they said it or not they don't know that america came by agitation and by fighting as well is there anything you can throw a light on that very comment if at all it is true there is, there is no comment on that it is dead on arrival so i know that they did that they did that one month ago so uh, but uh, what am I going to comment on that? Donald Trump doesn't listen to Islamic uh, terrorist sponsors like Nigeria. Exactly. So my second question is just like a human and, and, being. And, that then also, I am and then also, let me also quickly say that uh, I can never be Jesus. I am not even. I'm not even close to the speed of Jesus. I'm not even close to the sweat of Jesus. So all glory goes to God and Jesus. Jesus is the one that is piloting this affair through me. I can never ever be equated to his even footstep. So please, just I know that I know how you feel. I, I know I, how you feel, I, but just uh, to correct it, uh, you can continue. Just leave this comment and continue, please. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Yeah. The next one that I have been wondering about is in relation to our lobbyist. I know that they uh, we are we will talking not, we will to... Not, we will not entertain any question about lobbyists. Thank you. All right. Thank you so much. Keep the light shining. We are with you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, our own Betty. Thank you so much. The move. All right, uh, the hands are up and uh, we're going to bring them. Please... Uh, one one minute now going forward one minute bring your question and then the next person will take the microphone and uh, i give you the microphone simon you have 60 seconds please go ahead good evening uh, my people i greet you once again i want to thank my honorable prime minister simon Ekba. at least i have uh, learned a lot through him by knowing that Igbo can generate a lot of wise and intelligent people I honor you, my PM. Then um, I want my PM to make a little reference concerning this after this uh, convention in Finland and we declared our freedom. Then I want him to ref uh, give a little reference on how we are going to deal with Nigeria or how international community is going to put, uh, in, uh, put their eye on how Nigeria is going to treat our leader Marvin and the Kano. I have addressed you know, I, I have, I have addressed that. You just watch and see how it unfolds. If you are listening, you know that I have addressed all these questions you are asking here. Thank you. Thank you, Marzi Simon. But I greet you. This is the question I wanted to ask. All right. Thank you very much. That has been taken care of. Thank you so very much. We we'll move. All right, and it's good that that was taken care of very quickly. Uh, please uh, see vibes. Unmute yourself and bring your question, please. Okay. Good evening, my Prime Minister. Good evening, everyone on the space. I thank you all for this day. Okay, my question is just simple. What I want to ask is that how will Biafra handle issues of 
borders, citizenship, and governance after independence. You wait, we have a constitution. You wait, we have a constitution. Can you mute yourself, please? You Can you? Okay, that is a noise. So, the Afra, mute your, mute your mic. The Afra, the Afra have a constitution which will be adopted in the convention, and those constitutions have addressed the issue of border crossing, the issue of citizenship, and all that is was well or is well addressed in the Biafra constitution. So you don't have anything to worry about. And just uh, keep your finger crossed after the convention, the Biafra constitution will be public. All right, uh, see vibes are you good with that? You have another question? You have another question? Okay, my second question is this. Am I loud and clear? Bring it on, please. Bring I'm it on, please. I'm okay. not sure which your mic after that. Okay. What I want to ask is that how much support does the Biafra independent movement have from the people in the region? You're asking how much support. You're asking how much when you have 40 states, mic. when you have 40 United States of Biafra, have your map, have representative in all the 40 states. You're asking how much support you have. You have your support from all your family members. Hello. Thank you. Okay, thank you. I'm done. Okay, thank you. Uh, how, how much support? Every every seat at home, you see this. So the whole of the Afra is locked down. Our vote no, he's talking about support. Where he's talking about support where fifty million people have voted. How many people do you have in Nigeria? Yeah. Uh, all right, all right. Just wait. Uh, somebody else coming. Uh, okay, okay. All right, uh, we move. Uh, please uh, go ahead and bring your question. Um, Igbo, the progenitor of black. Please go ahead. Uh, my Honorable Prime Minister, I greet every one of you in the house. Um, my question is uh, based on the immigrant uh, treaty with the UN. Uh, like we all know the situation the world are facing now based on the immigrants. How do we be able to manage it in the situation whereby... Where are you, where are you, calling, where are, where are you calling from? Mm -hmm. Where are you calling from? I'm calling from South Africa. Why are you worried about immigrants when you are immigrants in another man's land? <laughs> yes, uh, that is where I'm, I'm not worried. I'm just uh, trying to emphasize some one or two things. What are, what, what are you emphasizing because you are an immigrant in South Africa? So is every if, mm -hmm. if uh, Mandela, if Mandela and Co were emphasizing on immigrants, will you be there? No. Uh, I will so not be just, there. Not so be. cut the question, please. You, mm. you we should be asking something that is going to help, you know, to explain certain things about the freedom, not uh, about uh, immigrant. We are concerned about immigrant. Why you are there somewhere, so some some somewhere's country, somebody else country, and as an immigrant. If everybody was concerned about immigrant, you will not be there. So talk yeah, about yeah, something but... that will help. Talk about something that will help your freedom, not all this nonsense uh, side talk about. Mm. What will happen after your freedom? Talk about how you are going to get your freedom. Talk about get your finance, freedom. finance that is needed to get your freedom first. Talk about the guns and bullets you need to protect your women and children first. Protect your border. You are here asking question about immigrants, and some of you are just asking questions that are not relevant. Yeah, you should have uh, waited. You see where I'm coming. No, no, because from. I know I'm where you are. Now. I know where I know where you are going. If I allow you to say it now, you will still mess up. Do you want to say it? Do you want to continue? Yeah, can I say it? Okay, I'll continue. Let me hear you. Yeah, where I'm going for, I'm going through based on because of what we have in uh, the the Islamic jihadists. And we have a situation where we have to checkmate them so that they will not use this uh, those avenues to chip into us the um uh, the uh, uh the jihadists. Have, 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 have you finished? Yeah, that is the angle I want to ship in. Okay. You see, this, you still mess up. That's exactly why I stopped you from the beginning, because Nigerians are criminals. Nigeria breed criminals. Yes. So if Nigeria breed criminals, South Africans are worried about the criminality of Nigerians. Will you be there in South Africa? No. That's why I asked you to leave that talk. Now you have said it. Exactly the same thing I was thinking you are going to say is what you said. You said you have something different. Okay. You see, okay, I think I rest my question. Thank you. I withdraw my question. Right. 
Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, please, uh, the next person to bring your question is uh, Broda. What's this? Broda. Broda Van Van Van. Broda Van Van Van. Oh, yeah, let's hear you. Good evening, sir. Um, good evening, everyone. I want to thank um, thank you, you for this privilege. Uh, sir, I've been following you closely and I've been um, observing everything you're doing. It has just been falling into place. So my own is not really a question. It's like an appreciation and also a soft reminder that you should please help us with a continuous update. Because we here, that is what we are feeling. You know, it's not as if we have a, a direct boss we work with or whatever. And you know, in this part of the country, anything can happen to you. So you have to be very careful, especially with your with your device. So please help us continuously with the updates. As they are making the moves, help us with the updates. And this, uh, what's it called? This, uh, the constitution you talked about. Because you know, we here, we need to study it also. December 2nd does not assure, assure us the fact that uh, everything is going to be rosy. But based on the constitution and based on the things that will be happening unfolding, we'll be able to trace our steps individually because it's the individual effort that will that would collectively bring about what we seek to achieve. That's just what I want to say. Thank you so much, sir. Uh, th thank you very much. All right, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, we move, please. I want to encourage us to bring a really demanding, engaging questions, please. Uh, who is opening their mic? Please, um, uh, uh, Bethan is on Australia. Let's hear you. Your mic has always remained open. Let's hear you. What do you have to ask to go ahead? Australia. Hello, greetings. Can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. Ah, is that uh, Daddy? Please go ahead, sir. <laughs> uh, greetings, everyone. Your Excellency. Uh, I'm just excited on this uh, United Nations Human Rights Treaties that you presented tonight. And um, I just want to say, now we begin to understand why the vice president of Nigeria went to the United Nations and we saw him on the sideline with the president of uh, Finland. And when he got back home, the news media was uh, twisted the whole thing and saying that the reason why he had the president of Finland on the sideline was to uh, ask him to support Nigeria to become members of the uh, United Nations. Um, now, we now see why Nigeria got only two votes. Because the vice president himself that was soliciting for Nigerian membership was himself the leader, the sponsor of the terrorist that is ravaging the whole country. With what you stated and with all these human rights treaties, I could now see the saying that says overtaking is allowed. Today, it has become clear to the world that United States of Biafra has overtaken the zoo called Nigeria. So I just want to bring it to the notice of everyone that what RPM have just stated tonight has shown what kind of nation that Biafra is going to be. Overtaking is allowed, my PM, and um, I don't think Nigeria will have anything to say, especially their media, having understood what you share tonight and all these treaties, Nigeria is supposed to be a signatory to, but unfortunately, 
they ignored because they don't know any better. And uh, upon the violations of these treaties, they think they could bulldoze themselves to becoming members of uh, a permanent, uh, having a permanent seat in the United Nations. So overtaking is allowed. And um, unfortunately, Nigeria has messed themselves up. Kudos, uh, Your Excellency, for leading us and for bringing to the world, you know, showing the world what Biafra indeed is going to be. Thank you, Your Excellency. Thank you very much, uh, Ambassador Iwunze. Uh, Iwunze is the uh, Biazen uh, officer of the Biafra government in Australia and uh, the representative of uh, the Biafra Pacific in Australia. So thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, our daddy. We appreciate you, daddy Iwunze. Thank you so very much. All right, uh, we move. I uh, please uh, actually bear with me. Let me bring up uh, this uh, person with the same image uh, that is familiar with the image uh, we see as always, um, you know, antagonizing and attacking. I don't know. Uh, okay, let's see. Mayor, I don't know if you is the same person that owns this account, but uh, we are happy to have some of you here. The Igbo, there's one Igbo page. We are welcoming all of you. Please come here and ask the Prime Minister questions. I uh, please grab the mic, uh, Mayor, and uh, let your question uh, be precise and make it uh, quick, please. Commute yourself, Mayor. Mayor, yeah, we're giving you the microphone. Unmute yourself and go straight to the point. Yes. Mayor, are you ready to ask the question or should we remove you from the speaker? All right, uh, maybe he's scared. They're scared to confront the families. I'll still leave you in the room. When you're ready, you come, come up with that question. 